Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Tony and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program and we have an hour together for chair yoga. Everything I offer today is simply that an offering. You're listening to me a little bit at the time, but most of the time you're checking in with yourself, checking in with your body and how it feels and deciding whether you need to adjust or adapt something, maybe rest because a movement doesn't feel good in your body or do something completely different that your body is drawn to. So please take the opportunity throughout the class to really keep checking in with yourself. And we'll do that at the beginning right now anyway, so you get used to doing it. So make sure the chair you're on is stable. Feet a comfortable distance apart, and it's gonna look different for each and every one of us. And you may get halfway through the class and wanna change that up too, and that's okay. There's absolutely no wrong way of doing this. So picking up the toes, spreading the toes wide, or even simply imagining spreading the toes wide. And it doesn't matter whether you've got socks on, slippers or shoes. You can even pick up the balls of your feet and imagine stretching the soles of your feet. Lay in a big good morning stretch. And then laying the balls of the feet down and then softening the toes down. So they're not gripping. Feel the weight distribution through your heels and the balls of your feet and lightly through your toes. And notice if you're placing your weight more to the outer or inner edge of your feet and see if you can even that up. And same thing with the balls of your feet as opposed to the heels. If you're, you've got more pressure in the heels, then even that up a little. That way we awaken our awareness to our feet and to that support underneath us. Same thing with our seat. So wiggle and waggle a little bit. You can even soften the flesh of your seat away from you so you're more aware of the two bony bits underneath you. That's the base of the pelvis. And if you move from side to side, then you'll start to have a deeper connection to those two bony bits underneath you. Deciding whether your shoulders coming a little more forward or a little more back will sit you right up onto the tips of those sit bones. A lot of the time, especially when we have the back of the chair, we round, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here, we round into the lower back and we sit more onto the back of the pelvis. And when the shoulders are forward, we send our tailbone out behind us and we're using a whole lot more support through the thighs. What we want is a distribution of weight in between those. So more or less, and again, it's going to be different for each of us, shoulders stacked over our hips. A lot of the time we spend a lot of time leaning back or sitting forward. So just getting used to that posture. Yoga is so great to bring our awareness to our posture and we strengthen our posture and everything else becomes a little easier. We're going to do the same thing here. So we've now got that even distribution. Roll the shoulders back and down and feel that length through the crown of your head as if I just came and picked you up from the crown of your head. Once the shoulders have settled down, broaden across the collarbones. And again, this is just checking in with our posture. When we have this taller, broader posture as in the upper body and this grounded posture in the lower body, our organs have a little bit more space to do their work, especially with that open chest. The heart and the lungs have a little bit more space. So using that, we'll take a nice beautiful breath in and exhale it out. Keep the posture, soften the tension. And do a couple more breaths just like that in your own time. Feel free to lower your gaze or close your eyes as you do that, just to get a more internal experience. Keep the shape, soften the posture, or soften the tension. And then once you're here, allow the breath to come back to an easy breath, whatever that is for you. And then make any small or big adjustments to simply make this feel better in your body. And that's the permission I was talking about earlier, to make this your own. And now we'll do that check-in. So 
So going inside, notice simply ask yourself, how am I feeling today? And see if you can sit through the thoughts that come in and really feel into how you are in this moment. Your emotions, and you'll have your own language for that. And if you're not quite sure, then just sit with a um, curiosity. Notice what arises without judgment. And then also notice if there's anything particular on your mind today. If you've got any particular concerns or worries or you're anticipating something coming up, or you're still chewing over something that happened yesterday or um, previously. And again, no judgment here, just noticing and being aware. And then we dive inside the body. So take your awareness inside and again, closing your eyes or softening your gaze down is a great way of turning inwards. And notice how your body is feeling this morning. And we notice this by sensation a lot of the time. So notice if there are particular sensations that are really present. And usually that's the most challenging um, sensation. So something like a shoulder aching or um, your lower back or any particular location in your body that you're generally quite familiar with. Or maybe you have um, slept a little weird on your neck and you're aware of that. So we gather that information and that's really important because moving forward into our practice, we need that information to see whether we need to pay particular attention to a certain area or we need to be extra careful. And then I want you to open your awareness to sensations you wouldn't necessarily pay attention to normally. So um, we've noticed the loud ones, now we want to quieter sensation. So maybe taking your awareness to different locations in your body. So if your left shoulder was aching, maybe take your awareness to your right shoulder and notice sensation there. You might simply notice the sensation of the support underneath your feet or seat. You might notice the sensation of the air on your skin. And then send your awareness out into your whole body, noticing if you can tune into that inner body energy. And that might be as simple as noticing that you're quite tired today or depleted, or you're feeling a little buzzing inside and you feel like you're ready to move. And you also might find that inner body energy at the very sensitive parts of our body. So the tips of our fingertips, the lips, and there may be different places for you. So noticing that as well, and that informs our practice going forward too. And then start to tune your awareness into your breath, just as it is, just at the moment. Maybe start to bring your lips together if you haven't already, starting to breathe in and out through your nose. And that starts to give signals to your body immediately that everything is okay. It starts to reduce the stress response, simply breathing in and out through your nose. And starting to deepen the inhale and lengthen the exhale in your own way. We're not trying to achieve a particular count here. A little deeper and a little longer breath. However feels comfortable for you. We keep that breath going and then we start to smooth it out. And anybody who's taken my classes, this is like my favorite breath. The longer, smoother breath. So we steady the inhale and we steady the exhale. And again, this is sending signals to our central nervous system that all is well.
And as you start to get used to that new rhythm and that control of the breath, keeping this breath going, but letting go of any kind of tension in the breath or again the body, if there is tension that's built up or you feel like you're putting a little too much emphasis on the breath and soften into that. So we have this quality of ease in the breath. To get used to this breath, this longer, smoother breath, and knowing you can come back to it at any time. Rooting down through your feet and seat, rising from there, broadening the collarbones as we settle the shoulders, and making any adjustments for this posture to be more comfortable for you. Keeping that breath going, and we move from the breath. Taking that right hand down, and I'm mirroring you. And with the breath, allowing the shoulder to rise on the inhale and soften on the exhale. Longer, smoother, softer breath. Longer, smoother, softer movement. Whichever direction you're going in. And notice how this feels, deciding for yourself whether the movement needs to be bigger, smaller, or you need to take a little rest or less repetitions. At the end of the next exhale, we'll pause and then go around in the opposite direction. Noticing where you feel this in your body. And let's take two more unless you're already resting. And come back to center. Taking a hand in a soft fist and circling through the wrist. One direction, nice and slow. And then we'll take that round in the opposite direction. Nice. Letting the hand come back to support on the right side. Left arm reaches down. Inhaling, the shoulder comes up. Exhaling, down and round, whichever direction you're going in. Notice where you feel this in your body. Notice if you need to change or adjust the movement. And at the end of the exhale, or when you're ready, we'll pause and take that round in the opposite direction. Nice and slow and steady. More isn't better in yoga. It's just a case of moving and being aware of how that affects us. Another couple of movements, unless you're already resting. And then we'll take that left hand back to stillness. Left hand comes into a soft fist and we circle through the rest. Nice and slow. Almost lazy movements. Taking that round in the opposite direction. And then releasing that. Right hand angles down, I'm going to turn that right palm out, broadening the collarbones here. Our spine is nice and stable and the movement is coming from the shoulder, from the elbow to start with. So we inhale, the fingertips up towards the shoulder, exhale, the palm comes down. Keeping the breath moving 
and the movement guided by the breath. Option to stay there, moving from the elbow or start to lift from the shoulder, keeping the joints nice and easy. There's no rush to make the movement as big as possible straight away. The body likes it when we ease into movement. The option is to take that left hand to support on the chair if you want to take that right arm up and over. Longer, smoother, softer breath. Longer, smoother, softer movement. Option to keep those joints nice and easy, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers and thumbs. Or option to reach through the joints so we have a little bit more length through that right side. And again, that support on your chair can help. Above all else, you want to feel stable. We've got another two here. Always resting if you prefer. And then taking that right hand down and back to support. The left hand dangles, palm turns out from the elbow to start with as the collarbones broaden, inhaling the fingertips up, exhaling down. And you don't have to match my breath, you'll breathe at different lengths. So make sure your um, longer, smoother, softer breath is guiding the movement. Option to start to move from the shoulder. Keeping the shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers and thumbs nice and soft. Don't be worried if one side is drastically different from the other. We've all got different things going on, different ranges of motion. That right hand can support you on the chair if you're taking that left arm up and overhead. The tendency is to take that um, down exhale and kind of drop the arm down but it's just as important as the reaching of the inhale that's where we start to build strength and stability the option is to keep those joints really nice and easy as if they were flowing or to reach through the entire arm and get a little bit more length one is not better than the other it's just a different option to check out in your body. Let's do another two. Coming back to center, hands coming back down onto your thighs. If you're sitting into the back of your chair, as we get down into the spine, it could be beneficial to come forward a little bit. On the inhale, I'm gonna turn around so you can see on the inhale, the hands come back towards the pelvis as we open up through the chest, arching the back, drawing the elbows back. Keep the chin tucked for now. On the exhale, sending the fingertips towards or on the knees as we curl in the belly towards the spine and round through the back body. So arching and rounding, seated cat and cow can be a very gentle movement. Again, the body likes us to start small so it can naturally get used to and open up into the movement. Option on the inhale to lift the chin or to draw the chin down on the exhale. You can bring this all the way down into your feet on the inhale. Imagine dragging the heels of your feet back towards the legs of the chair. And on the exhale, push down into the sole of your feet. And we awaken the muscles through the legs. That tends to get a little bit deeper down into the lower back and the belly. If that doesn't suit you, then there's no need to do it. If you want to add on, we'll add on. So taking the hands in soft fists. On the inhale, we're gonna draw the elbows back and draw the fists towards the ribs as we open up through the chest. And on the exhale, we're gonna turn the knuckles upwards and send the knuckles forward in a sort of soft punch. Inhaling and exhaling. 
So it's almost like you're kind of rowing in a boat, but it's a little different. So all this does is it exaggerates the opening through the chest and the front body on the inhale, and it exaggerates that openness across the back body on the exhale. If this doesn't suit your body, and then just simply come back to the hands sliding up and down the upper legs. Or do every other one. Let's take three more breaths here. Resting if you prefer. Noticing how this feels in your body. And we'll come all the way back to center. Beautifully done. Elbows draw in towards the ribs. And we'll send those fingertips out, spreading them wide as if they were placed on a wall right in front of your nose. This is the exhale. On the inhale, I'm going to slide one arm up. I'm going to start on the right, mirroring you. And on the exhale, I'm going to draw that elbow down nice and slow. Going to the left side. Mm -hmm. Option is to send one hand up so much that we find a length on one side. This is not unlike when we take the arm overhead. We've already been here. Keeping the both sit bones grounded onto the chair. So our tendency is, as we lift one arm, that hip also wants to lift. But I'm gonna ask you to consider grounding down at the same side hip. That way we get a little bit more length through the intercostal muscles, which are in between each rib. You might even feel this through the belly and through the lower back. Let's take one more either side, nice and slow. And again, paying attention to how it feels in your body, where you feel it, and if there's any adjustments you can make to make it feel better for you. Beautiful. And we're gonna take those hands down, palms towards me, roll the shoulders back and down, broaden the collarbones, and on the inhale, we're gonna turn the palms up. That's going to bring the shoulder blades behind you towards the spine. That's the inhale. On the exhale, we're going to turn the palms down, back, maybe even up, and that's going to collapse the collarbones and open up across the top of the shoulders, the, collar, the shoulder blades sliding away from each other on the back body. Inhaling, opening the palms forward, maybe even up to the sky. And try and keep, as you move through this movement, opening and closing, um, try and keep the spine as neutral as possible. So the movement really is coming from the shoulders. Our tendency is to round on that exhale and open the chest on the inhale, like cat and cow. We're gonna try and keep that spine as neutral as possible. So the only thing that is rotating here is the shoulders. Option to stay here. Option to take those arms to shoulder height as if we're twisting a light bulb in and out. Don't be surprised if, again, the range of motion on one side is drastically different to the other. Let's take one more breath here. Nicely done. And resting the arms down, back to the top of the legs or the arms of your chair. From here, coming into a twist, and we're gonna take it a nice gentle twist. So rooting to rise, we've got that steady, longer, smoother breath. This is the inhale. On the exhale, twisting towards the left, right hand comes forward, left slides back, and we come back to center. Inhaling and exhaling. Glancing over that left shoulder if that feels okay in your neck. Option to stay here. Option with that right arm, draw the elbow in. 
on that exhale we're reaching forward and drawing the right elbow in on the inhale reaching forward we've already been here with our cat and cows mm -hmm. and that just assists our shoulders to come forward option to keep flowing option for the last three breaths to twist and stay keep the breath flowing that longer smoother softer breath maybe that right those right fingertips slide over towards the left so what is the left shoulder draws back the right shoulder comes forward stay for the last breath here and then when you're ready back we come take a nice breath in exhale it out nicely done coming to the other side hands resting down rooting to rise longer smoother steadier breath this is the inhale on the exhale left hand slides forward as we twist to the right and coming back to center In twists, we never try and force things. We're trying to allow the body to open up in its own gentle way. Option to keep this going. Option to reach with the left arm forward and on the exhale, we're drawing that elbow, grazing the ribs. Inhaling and exhaling. You can glance over that right shoulder if that feels good to you more is definitely not better here option to keep pulsing like this option for the last three breaths to stay in the twist rooting to rise keeping that breath going we're not holding on to any place with our hands and using the leverage of the hands. We really have the strength through the core. Let's stay for the last exhale unless you're resting. And then we'll come all the way back to center. Nicely done. Taking the legs out a little bit further. So we've got this extended wide base. Rooting to rise the same principles rooting down through the feet through the seat to lift up now you might want to come back in your chair if you feel like you have less support here and you're less stable hands resting on the thighs or the side of the chair and start to steady the breath from here barrel rolls through the ribs round in a circle the inhale draws the belly forward the ribs forward on the exhale we're curling back noticing how that feels and once you have it there's no wrong way to do it here this is an intuitive movement maybe the shoulders the head and neck get involved your hips Maybe it's a small movement, maybe it's a big movement and that feels really good for you today. And keep that longer, smoother, steadier breath going. We'll pause when you're ready and then take it round in the opposite direction. You can close your eyes, go inwards, really tune into the language of the body here, sensation and the energy, noticing how this feels in particular areas of your body. And if you need to change something up, adjust something. And let's take two more. And then we'll come all the way back to center, rooting to rise, adjusting yourself. 
hands towards or on that right knee. You can stay with the foot on the floor or lift the toes or even the ball of the foot. Left foot is your foundation as well as your seat. On the inhale, we're taking the knee out. On the exhale, we're drawing that knee in. The rest of our body is as stable as possible. So you might feel that you want to come more forward or back on your chair, depending on whether you need support under that right thigh. And we're not trying to force past the breath. A lot of the time, um, when we come in, we'll kind of stay there, hold our breath, and the same thing for the inhale. And we're trying to avoid that, so the movement is a flow, same as the flow of the breath, never pushing the body. Mm -hmm. One more. And the next time that knee comes out, we'll stay there, taking the foot down, making any adjustments you need. And then we'll come to the left side, hand towards or on that knee. You can lift the toes or the ball of the foot so you're on the heel, or keep the foot down. On the inhale, we've got that external rotation. Exhale, internal rotation. But the rest of our body is not coming along for the journey. So we really are isolating into the right of the left hip here. Instead of bringing our body along for the journey, there's nothing wrong with that. We're just really trying to lubricate into the hip joint. Nicely done. And let's take one more full movement. And the next time the knee comes out, we'll leave it there. Take the foot down and heel toe, draw those feet back to center hands to the knees and we'll just wash those knees from side to side coming to the inside and outside edge of the feet if that feels stable enough for you just coming back to center take a beautiful breath in when you're ready exhale it out nice and soft releasing tension and tightness take another two just like that Notice habitual areas of tension that you can let go of. And then know that if you're coming down to the floor, you can already start to do that. Gather everything you need and come down onto your back body. If you're staying in the chair, everything we do can be done from the chair. We will be circling through the hips one direction and then another noticing that gravity is a little different in the chair so you can tap up and tap down should you want to and come into an external rotation and depending on your range of motion what feels good for you you can stay up here or lean forward making sure you have support and then coming into a twist the twist of your choice and for the rest of you, I will come down to the earth myself and meet you there. Here we are down on the earth and we're going to come all the way to our back. Knees to the sky, feet to the floor, setting yourself up for your comfort. So if you need extra support underneath your head, please take it. If you need softness underneath your spine, please set that up. We'll pick the pelvis up and lengthen. So drop the pelvis or place the pelvis a little bit further away from your shoulders. So that's the equivalent of lengthening through the spine. And just take a few moments to settle into the new way of being, the new sense of support underneath you. Re-establish that breath of that longer, smoother, softer breath. And then we'll draw that right knee in towards your chest. Give yourself a little hug here. Right hand to right knee. And you can keep the left foot exactly as it is, or you can extend it out. 
And this Afanasana, we've got that length through the groin. If that does not feel good to you, then please keep a bend in that left knee, foot to the floor. We'll extend the right leg up towards the sky, so we're lengthening through the right arm, and then we're going to circle through the knee. As if you're drawing circles in the air, and maybe you don't need the um, hand on the knee at all, in which case arms come into a cactus or a T or a comfortable position for you. Bigger isn't better here, so trying to keep that movement st um, steady, inhaling and exhaling. And then when you're ready, we'll pause and take that round in the opposite direction. Nicely done. Always resting when you want to. And if something doesn't feel good to you, can you adjust or adapt that for it to feel better? And then we're going to come back. As the knee draws in towards the chest, give yourself a hug. Flex in both ankles. And as we draw the knee in towards the chest, we're pushing that left heel away if it's extended. Take a few breaths there. And then when you're ready, if it's not already, bending that left knee, left foot to the floor. Coming in to thread the needle, the right ankle comes over the left thigh. And offering that right knee out towards the side and towards the end of your mat. Not so much so that you're tilting your pelvis, the movement really is coming from the hip. And to notice the difference, you could just do that a couple of times and notice if you're readjusting your pelvis every time, keep the pelvis grounded both sides to the earth and then wing the knee out as much as is comfortable for you. Great place to be. If this is a lot, then extend the left foot out a little further away from you. That's going to make it a little easier on the right hip. If you want to add on, we draw the left thigh in towards the chest, threading the right hand through that keyhole and then taking the side of the thigh underneath the um, knee pit. You can even interlace your hands or in front of that shin. Both feet are flexed to keep the knees um, supported. And wherever you grip on, that's just how long your arms are. There's no perfect way of doing it. And breathe. And you can make small adjustments here. Taking the whole shape over to the left somewhat is going to change up the sensation through the right hip. Keep the breath flowing. Inhaling and exhaling. And then when you're ready, release the hands, take that left foot back to support on the floor if it wasn't there already, and releasing that right leg. Taking the feet wide and just washing the knees side to side gently. Coming all the way back to center. Here the feet come back into parallel or comfortable distance apart, drawing that left knee in this time. We'll flex in that ankle. Option to stay here or extend out that right leg along the earth. And we've got this um, apanasana here. Option to stay there if that feels really good to you. Left hand to the left knee and the knee comes up towards a little bit more horizontal, um, vertical towards the sky. And then we'll start to draw circles with that knee. And maybe you need the hand there to support you or maybe it feels better to have the arms, cactus or a T down on the earth so you have a little bit more grounding. Allow the movements to be guided by the breath. A 
And then when you're ready, I'm gonna pause and take that round in the opposite direction. Always resting should you need to or adjusting the movement to be bigger or smaller or take every other one. And then the next time the knee draws in, we'll keep it there, give it a little hug. Right foot comes to the floor if it's not there already and we cross the outer left ankle onto that right thigh, adjusting how far away that right heel is to suit the sensations in your body. Great place to stay right here. Again, we're winging that left knee out. Not so much so that we're adjusting the pelvis. Pelvis is rooted, but we're really trying to um, get that range of motion through the hip. Flex in that left ankle to keep the knee safe. Option to stay here and breathe. Option to breathe and bring the right thigh in towards you. Hands come to either side of the thigh, the knee pit or in front of the shin. Right foot is flexed as well if it's up off the earth. So we have the option here to make little adjustments, take the whole shape over to the right a little. That's gonna make a tremendous amount of difference with sensation. So more sensation is not better. We're trying to keep the breath flowing. Stay for as long as you like. Or when you're ready, release the bind if you had one. Send the right foot down and release the left leg. Adjust the feet to be as wide as your mat. Arms come in a cactus or a T and we're washing the knees from side to side. A big or a small movement, your choice. And then when you're ready, coming back to center. Feet come back in towards each other and we're gonna push down into the feet, shift the hips to the right. Extend the left leg out, we've already been here. Right knee draws in, up and over to the left, rounding through the right shoulder in a cactus or a T. Left hand resting on the top of that right knee to ground it. Play with how high or how low you want that right knee to be and that's gonna depend on how it feels in your body. Feel free to support that knee, shin, or ankle, and breathe. Option to take the gaze over the right shoulder, if that feels good for you, and breathe. Longer, steadier breaths in and out. Stay for as long as feels good. Then the gaze comes to center when you're ready. Knee comes to center. Place the right foot down. Left foot comes to meet it, so both knees to the sky. Pelvis comes into the center and then over to the left, going to the other side. Lengthening the right leg out. Left knee draws in up and over to the right, keeping that left shoulder grounded. Feel free to play with the knee if it comes further away or closer towards your chest. Use that breath, longer, steadier breaths in and out. Paying attention to your body, noticing what's happening, steadying the breath. And if the gaze is over the left shoulder, when you're ready, the gaze comes to center. Knee comes to center, foot to the floor, and the right foot travels to meet it. Set your hips back to center. 
curl the knees in here, both together, either wide towards your armpits or in towards each other. Rock and roll a little bit from side to side. Any other movements you feel like to finish up your practice. And from here, we're coming into relaxation. Maybe constructive rest, knees to the sky, feet to the floor, ankles wide, knees touching, or stretch out like it's starfish. As you get settled, take any adjustments you need to feel better for you. There's no wrong way of doing relaxation. You can be on your back, your belly, you can sit upright. If you've got a couch or a bed closer by that is more comfortable, please go ahead. And as you get settled, taking any extra layers or um, if you could dim the lights or anything that you need for your comfort. I'm going to do a little bit of breath work. So as you settle in, if you haven't already, feel free to close your eyes or lower or soften your gaze. Start to pay attention to your breath coming in and out. The inhale as steady as possible and a smooth exhale. I'm going to split those exhales into two. So not at the moment, but in a, when I say, if you'd like to experiment, I'm going to split that exhale. So we'll exhale one half, pause, and then exhale the other half. So when you're ready, keeping the inhales the same, the next inhale you have, nice steady inhale to the top of your breath. On the exhale, exhale half of the breath, pause, and then exhale the other half. And then continue with a full inhale and split the exhale. Exhale one half, pause. Exhale the rest of the air out and continue in that fashion. So we have a two-part exhale. If this feels comfortable for you, then you're welcome to stay. If you would like to try a three-part exhale, we'll do that now. So on one of your next exhales, we exhale one third of the breath, pause. Exhale another third and pause. And exhale all the rest of the breath out, taking a steady inhale and continue in your own length of breath. Extending the exhale has so many benefits to our central nervous system, to our body, If it's uncomfortable at any point, then please come back to an easy breath. We'll take more or less another five breaths like this. Three part exhale or your breath that you've chosen. The end of your next exhale, or whenever you're ready, release the breath entirely and let the breath come back to its natural, easy rhythm. And as you do that, allow your body to soften into the support underneath you. And there's no more control. We simply allow ourselves to start to let go. your 
bones get heavier, your soft tissues to start to release, lengthen and loosen. Pay particular attention to the muscles around your face and jaw, back teeth parted, tongue soft. Notice any remnants of tension or tightness in locations in your body and pay particular attention to those areas, offering softness and breath to those areas. And starting to let go of the thoughts as well. Notice as thoughts arise and notice as they leave. And be curious. curious to you as you are <coughs> be curious at your reactions to certain thoughts and how it's easier to watch some come and go and less easy to watch others without judgment simply with a curiosity Stay for as long as you like. For those of you who would like to finish their practice, start to bring your awareness back to the support underneath your body. Notice all the connections your body to that support and bringing your awareness back to your full body so really dropping your awareness inside your body and filling it from the crown of your head to the tip of your toes and fingertips paying attention to sensation that inner body energy Noticing with a curiosity how everything feels after your practice. Drawing your awareness to how your body responds to the breath. The inhale rising of the chest and heart space, maybe even the torso. The exhale, the softening and letting go. Starting to increase the inhale. Imagine that you could breathe from your feet all the way up to your crown of your head and exhale all the way down through your body. Infusing every cell, every fiber of your body with energy on that inhale and allowing that sense of softness for the exhale. In your own time, starting to bring awakening movements to your fingers and toes, wrists and ankles, maybe your head glides softly from side to side. Those movements start to increase, maybe feeling 
a knee to stretch wide or long. Maybe give yourself a hug and curl up. There is no wrong way to awaken here. So maybe you want to curl up into a ball. Maybe some of you on your back want to roll to your side body. As you awaken in your own way, take little moments of stillness to really tune in to how it is that you're feeling. And take the next few breaths in your own way to come to a place that you want to finish your practice. And if you have extra time, stay exactly as you are. We'll settle into a place that we want to complete everything. And as we settle into that stillness, allow the support of the earth underneath you to hold you as you rise from there in your own way. Hands come into any kind of gesture that suits you today. There is no wrong way to do this. Take a breath in on the exhale, soften your gaze or close your eyes as you drop your chin towards your chest just softly. And take one more moment here to tune in with yourself. Notice how you're feeling. Thank yourself for this practice of breath and movement and awareness. I thank each of you for being present with me. From my heart to yours, thank you so much. Wishing you a wonderful day, week ahead.